Good morning. Good morning, everyone. We are starting off our Saturday morning, uh, going through Matthew 6, uh, 19 through 34. And hey, Brian, how's it going? Nice to see you there. Hey, EB. Um, it just rained here in uh, Des Moines, and so I'm hoping we don't get thunder or crashes of lightning that interrupt the Wi-Fi or uh, just cause things. And, and I live in a busy street. Hey, da hey, son. Hey, Brian. <laughs> Brian Miner always calls me dad. Um, so, hey, Sean. How's it going? Um, hey, as uh, people are coming on, I just have a question for you guys. Um, I was watching uh, Grace Catter Henry share her uh, story of how she came to know Jesus um, on Instagram and she apologized for all the birds in the background but um, just made me realize how much uh, I really love birds uh, we bought a game about birds and so I want to ask you uh, what is your favorite bird uh, as we've been playing this game called wingspan um, there's a couple birds that I really like one is the uh, the greater prairie chicken um, uh, it's, Kind of hard to see. It looks kind of funny. It's got a really bulbous throat. Um, yeah, what's what's your favorite bird? Type in your favorite bird in here. Uh, the other one that's really fun is the ruff. And maybe you can see it if I hold it up like this, but it's li really funny looking. Sean Covington says chickens or turkeys are his favorite. Um, my wife, she really loves robins. Um, and she loves robins, uh, and there's everywhere. So every time she sees one, she just goes wild over the, the robins. They have little stick legs. They kind of walk around. They have really bulbous -y kind of bodies, especially when they're wet and cold. So she's probably loving the fact that robins are coming back to Iowa. Um, uh, Rebecca Hastings says red-tailed red hawks. Yeah, the predators. Um, yeah, she also loves uh, sandpipers. Uh, because of the same reason, they're very bulbous bodies and little stick legs. She, she really goes wild whenever she sees like a robin or a sandpiper. Um, anything that's kind of bulbous with little stick legs, she just is crazy about. But yeah, what uh, what else? Um, anyone else have any favorite birds that they uh, love? Uh, that are coming back to their state, whether in Omaha or Iowa or Manhattan. Um, hey Shelby, thanks for logging on. The reason I'm asking about birds is uh, because in this passage, uh, we're actually called to uh, consider birds and we're called to uh, think about them and how they relate with God. Um, Brian Miner says, the bald eagle, America. <laughs> Oh, yeah, Jacob Van Vansickle says, the fattest robin of my life yesterday is what he saw. Seagulls? Beatty, really? Did you know that there actually is no, like, particular bird that is a seagull? That seagulls are actually, like, lots of different kinds of birds that all get labeled as seagulls? Because they kind of look a little similar. But there's tons of species that all get labeled seagulls. Um, they're kind of... I don't know. I, I won't say anything more. <laughs> uh, E.B. Adams says goldfinches. Those are those are awesome. Um, ooh, chickadees. Those are those are interesting. Um, it seems like there's a lot of people that like robins. So um, it is about nine forty three. So I just wanted to uh, kind of start digging into the passage together. Make sure that you uh, share you know this with your friends. I know it's Saturday morning. Um, so it's maybe some people have a late Friday night and they're like, oh man, I'm just kind of waking up. It's Saturday morning, 930. But thank you guys for who are here and uh, participating with us. So uh, one thing that I wanted you guys to know is that next week we're going to continue Monday through Saturday with 938 devotionals. Why 938? Because we want to embrace the concept and the thinking that God um, he's raising up workers for the harvest. And Matthew 9.38 says to pray for laborers for the harvest. And so we chose 9.38 very intentionally. Um, 
So next week, we're going to continue with devotionals. We'll have a Tuesday night uh, live broadcast at 9 o'clock and a Thursday night live broadcast at 9 o'clock. Um, and also, uh, we're going to do a little raffle coming up. So uh, what we want to encourage you to do in the next week is leave a review on the Campus Fellowship Facebook page for your campus. So whether that's Omaha, Lincoln, Drake, uh, DMAC, Grandview, um, or even the Manhattan students, if you leave a review on Facebook for your campus group, we're going to raffle off some CF merch uh, to anyone who leaves a review on any of those individual campus Facebook pages. Um, or Iowa State. Sorry, I left you guys out. Um, yeah, so I think that's it. Uh, just we'll read through the passage together and, and just uh, talk about it. So Matthew 6, 19 through 34. Why don't we pray? Father, pray that uh, you would help us this morning uh, to uh, focus the eyes of our heart on you. God, I pray that uh, you would um, yeah, help us today, Lord, to uh, know what it is that you have before us. Help us to have hearts that love you, that trust you, God, um, that seek you first in your kingdom. So just thank you for uh, this time together. In your name we pray. Amen. All right, so Matthew six nineteen through 34. Uh, it says, Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and rust destroy, where thieves break in and steal. But, and I'll make a little note here, um, whenever I come across the word but, however, therefore, um, I always like to circle it because these connect thoughts. So maybe as you're reading it, circle it. Uh, but store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where neither wrath, moth nor rust destroys, and where thieves don't break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. If your eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if your eye is bad, your whole body will be full of darkness. So if the light within you is darkness, how deep is that darkness? No one can serve two masters, since either he will hate one and love the other, or he will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Therefore I tell you, don't worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, or about your body, or about what you will wear. And here's a question you just need to maybe keep in mind for later, okay? Uh, isn't life more than food, and the body more than clothing? Consider the birds of the sky. They don't sow or reap or gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Aren't you worth more than they? Can any of you add one moment to his lifespan by worrying? And why do you worry about clothes? Observe how the wildflowers of the field grow. They don't labor or spin thread, yet I tell you that not even Solomon in all his splendor was adorned like one of these. If that's how God clothes the grass of the field, which is here today and thrown into the furnace tomorrow, won't he do much more for you, you of little faith? So don't worry saying, what will we eat, what will we drink, or what will we wear? For the Gentiles eagerly seek all these things, and your heavenly Father knows that you need them. But seek first his kingdom uh, the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be provided for you. Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And as I think through this passage, it's it uh, helps illuminate a lot of things, I think, in, in our hearts. Um, and what Jesus starts out with, he's, he starts out with two commands that are run opposite to each other, a negative command and a positive command. It says, don't store up treasures on earth, store up treasures in heaven. And it gives some reasons, you know, treasures on earth, they are temporary, they'll get destroyed someday. And we don't think a lot in the idea of treasures very much. If we hear the word treasure, maybe a lot of times you think of like, um, yeah, like babies or soft, cuddly animals. Um, and you maybe see some like kind of cheesy mental image of like soft focused lighting and memes. And, it's, and it's, uh, uh, thoughts about treasures are kind of maybe a little like, I don't get it. When I was in middle school, we uh, actually um, made a, a little treasure chest that I keep on my desk still. 
Um, I don't keep like literal treasures in here. It's just for storing uh, things. Um, but the idea is that treasures, they exist somewhere. And we all have treasures. And treasures are, you know, you can think of it as like, what gives you satisfaction in life? Where do you find satisfaction? Treasures, they, they give us this degree of satisfaction they, and they help us to feel um, maybe like we, um, our, our, our needs are being met in some way or significant um, or, or something like that. So the principle that Jesus points out here, though, is that where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. And the, the principle we need to understand is that um, satisfaction, whatever your source for satisfaction is, that is going to uh, lead to where your loyalties lie. So if what you're finding satisfaction in, you know, these last few weeks has been like Netflix binging or um, something else of the like, and you're finding just pleasures in this life and entertainment to be your source of satisfaction, then that's going to demand your loyalties. You know, when the next episode comes out, you are going to be chomping at the bit. You know, you might cancel other plans to be in fellowship or to be with Christians or to serve the people you're living with or spend time with God. Um, it might demand your loyalties to stay up until like 3 a.m. Uh, just watching, you know, YouTube videos or, or binging on Netflix. And so where your source of satisfaction lies, it's going to demand loyalties out of your life. And then Jesus gives a... a of kind of a proverbial reason why that is and says if the eye of the lamp uh if the eye okay so the eye of the lamp is the body if your eye is healthy your whole body will be full of light but if your eye is bad your whole body will be full of darkness and this word healthy um it's like a double entendre uh the word health uh, you don't know okay a double entendre is like if i were to tell you i could eat as much as a small family you can take that one of two ways. You know, you can take that to mean, uh, oh, wow, he's really hungry. He's going to eat like the portion size of a small family. Or you could take it to mean um, what? He's going to eat a whole family, like an entire small family. Um, and when I say that, maybe I'm trying to imply both and be funny. Um, but this word healthy, it has uh, this implication, this connotation built into it that is connotated with, with like generosity. Uh, the word haplos has a, is this word healthy and it's related to hapalotes, which is always, a, it's associated with generosity in the Bible. Um, and so when Jesus says this, if you, your eye is healthy, he's implying if you have a generous spirit as well, this is one of the, the hallmark features of people who know Jesus is that they're generous. And so if the eye is healthy, your whole body will be full of light. But if it's dark, it'll be full of darkness. And the thing we need to realize is that money problems, money issues, they're, they're not just uh, sometimes money. They're, not, they're actually never money issues. Uh, they always are rooted in heart issues. And so if you're finding yourself jealous or envious, you know, if, uh, or stealing things from, from people, like, you know, all these things kind of have to do with money, but they all reveal maybe deeper heart issues going on and then he just says this you know you either can only serve one master you'll only be devoted to one master and you will despise the other and so where does your devotion lie if your devotion lies with christ then in a lot of ways you're going to despise like feeling like an owner of things in this world that like if you have too much and you want to give it away you want to bless people with it but if you're finding your devotion in things of this life, then maybe you'll start despising like um, people who are doing well spiritually, or you'll start despising the things of God. Um, and so you can't serve two masters. You'll have a devotion to one, or and you'll, and you'll despise the other. Now, what Jesus says next is, is how we get there. It's one of the big reasons why our heart um, kind of like has this issue. And he says, therefore, I tell you, don't worry about your life. And I don't know about you, but when I hear that, that is almost like an anxiety-inducing command. I hear, don't be anxious. And immediately I think, oh, I'm all of a sudden, I'm, I'm really anxious because I'm anxious about being anxious. Um, 
you know, but, but Jesus, what he does is he forces you to, to like overcome anxiety about how you're being like, like your provisions and all that stuff. He forces you to look at the birds and to look at the flowers of the field and to look to God. He twice uses this phrase, your heavenly father. Whenever in the Bible, um, I see something about God and who he is. Um, I always like, I have, I love colors. Um, I color in purple because purple is the color of royalty. So I don't know if that helps you, but anytime the Bible mentions something about who God is, I want to zero in on that. And Jesus paints this picture of God. He is this heavenly father and he provides for all the birds. He provides for the flowers of the field. And he says, won't he just provide for you as well? And the thing we need to remember is that anxiety, it's a, it's a sin. Like anxiety, it's a sin. It shows and it reveals that we aren't trusting God. And he says, don't worry. <laughs> you know, and, and to help us get there, you know, he, he draws this picture, uh, these two pictures for us. And then he says that the Gentiles eagerly seek after those things. It's like their entire life, that is what they're, they're focused on, on getting. And he says, but seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be provided for you. And I don't know about you, but I read that and I think, well, does that mean that Christians will never go hungry or that Christians will never, um, you know, die of starvation? And, and I don't think that that's true. Um, if you remember that question Jesus asked at the beginning of like, his second part here, he says, isn't life more than food and the body more than clothing? Grace Catter Henry, we didn't plan this at all, but uh, the last verse that she shared when she shared her testimony or her story, how she came to know Jesus on Instagram, she quoted uh, Romans chapter eight and in Romans eight, 35 says, who will separate us from the love of Christ? Will tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or um, uh, or peril or sword? Just as is written, for your sake, we are being put to death all day long. We, can, we are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. But in all these things, we are overwhelmingly conquered through him who loved us. And he just lists these things, you know, will tribulation, distress persecution, famine, nakedness, like all these things, they'll never separate you from the love of God. And, and Paul, he experienced times when he was hungry and, and all these things. And so it's not saying that Christians will never um, even die of, die of starvation. But what it says is that life is more than food and the body is more than clothing. And if you have those things, it's because God wants you to glorify them, glorify him with them. Sorry. <laughs> and if you're dealing with, you know, not having then that's because God, he wants to accomplish something in you. You know, Jesus, he didn't have very much to his name. You know, he didn't own really anything in this world. And it's through his poverty that we were made rich. And that is just mind blowing to me. God, he knows exactly what you need to seek first his kingdom and his righteousness. And he's given that to you today. Whatever situation that is, whether it's abundance or like Paul's talking about, in tribulation, distress, persecution, famine, or nakedness, he wants you to seek first his kingdom and he's given you everything you need to do that with. Um, and to do that the best best with for your situation and your circumstances. And I just think, I, I always got to look at Jesus, that through his poverty, we were made rich. And if you have today, you know, this passage, it, it applies to us to be generous to people. You know, why, why do some people um, suffer? Well, sometimes it's just because the saints are being stingy. And we need to be generous people because we have a generous God who loves us and, and who sacrificed himself on the cross for us. And then he ends with this verse, Therefore, don't worry about tomorrow, because tomorrow will, bring, will worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own. And so worry and anxiety, it's about trying to take control of the future. And this is, does not mean we don't take consideration or concern for our present circumstances. Um, but anxiety is about trying to control and manipulate the future. But as Christians, we're called to have a concern for today. 
you know, whatever you're finding yourself in today, that should be where we, we apply ourselves into it. Um, and we don't worry about the future. We trust God with it. Um, so I'm going to pray once again, uh, you know, write a little review on your individual campus Facebook page uh, about how it's impacted your life and just something about And when we're going to do a little raffle at the end of next week uh, for anyone who's written a review on an individual like campus fellowship Facebook page. So um, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, I want to encourage you for the next hour, turn your phone off, put it on silent, put it away and go spend an hour with God. Uh, if you're wondering how to structure that hour, I usually do two thirds of prayer and journaling um, and then one third of, of prayer and meditation. So um, I hope that that's helpful for you guys. Why don't we pray and close our time? Uh, Father in heaven, thank you so much that you are our Father in heaven, uh, that you have given us everything we need for life and godliness. Now, God, I pray that you would um, help us today uh, to understand your word, God, to um, know what uh, it is that you want us to be applying ourselves into today. Help us to stay connected, encouraged, um, and accountable together. Name your pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys. I love you. And we'll see you later.